Okay, so to generate a Voronoi pattern, we're going to use one of the extensions. I've already changed the page border to be a 3 by 5 inch, and let's go ahead and draw a little rectangle around it, snapping to the borders. If you need to snap, this right-hand side option, this one right at the bottom is the one that allows you to snap to page borders, though you will probably need to enable snapping if it's not enabled. Sometimes this bar shows up on the top, head, uh, top side. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that fill using the fill and stroke menu just so I can kind of see what I'm doing. And we're going to need seeds. So these are just randomly spaced objects, wherever you want them to be. But these are going to be used by the extension to generate the Voronoi diagram. So I'm going to select all of these shapes, these seeds. Doesn't matter what the shapes are. They could be dots, they could be squares, rectangles, circles, oblong shapes. It's just going to use the center point, so the shapes don't matter. What really matters is the distribution of them, because that's what's going to make it kind of a random pattern. So I'm going to click on Extensions, go to Generate from Path, and we want Voronoi Diagram, not Voronoi Pattern. Voronoi Pattern is a lot harder to work with, so I recommend sticking with Voronoi Diagram. And you'll see it's using the bounding box of the page, uh, which is why I set the page to be whatever boundary I wanted. I'm going to click on Live Preview. You have an option for Live Preview. You should always use it because it gives you a feel for what's happening. So let's click Apply because if you close without that, it's not going to save anything. Click Close. And now I'm actually done with all these circles, so I'm going to go ahead and delete them. And it shouldn't have any impact on the pattern. So I've selected the pattern, but this pattern is actually a group of lines that have a stroke width, uh, but they're not enclosed areas. So if I zoom in with the Editing Paths by Nodes tool, you'll be able to see them individually. There's one node on each end, so it's just a simple line. If I wanted to make the stroke size bigger, which we're going to do in a second, I just incre increase the stroke size. But before I do that, what we're going to do is go back to the Select tool, and I'm going to grab all of them together, and I'm going to ungroup. Usually I would use Control shift g but you can find it in this object menu right here. And now it's ungrouped it into a bunch of lines. Now I'm going to grab everything, including that bounding box, and I'm going to increase the stroke style. Now because I have two different stroke styles, or stroke thicknesses, it's giving me a percentage. So instead I'm going to change it to inches, and it disappeared because it has a width of zero. So I'm going to increase that, and I'm going to increase it some more until it looks nice to me. This looks pretty good to me. Now you notice we still have just single points connecting them, so that means that we're not ending up with shapes that we can round over. So I'm going to convert them all to paths, and it'll look like nothing has changed, except when you click on Edit Paths by Nodes, now you can see that each of these is a region bounded by nodes, which is what we need. So back to the Select tool, with everything selected, I'm going to do a union to combine all those areas. And then, so now you can see that it is each of these individual areas. Sometimes you'll end up with extra nodes on the sides. Uh, if that's a problem for you, just go ahead and grab them and delete them. Sometimes that will deform the edges. So I will often grab the nodes of that edge and say, I want this to be a straight line. So you may have to do some cleanup here. It's not too hard to do, so I'll just go ahead and do it because there were only two examples. But we still want to round these edges of these little shapes. And it's these shapes that I'm planning on cutting out. So I need them to be paths that I can cut out. So the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to select the whole thing. I'm going to break it apart, which will make a just a dark mess. So I'll lower the opacity on the fill. And I'm going to delete the outer border now because I no longer need it. You might need it because it's the shape of whatever you're making. It could be you know, a box. It could be a planter. It could be a, a leather wallet that you're making. Whatever it is, that's fine. Now, there are a couple of ways that we can round the corners. Uh, for example, I could just tell this to be a uh, smooth node, but that really distorts the shape a lot. That's not really what I want to do. I want to kind of preserve the shape and just round on the inside. And to do that, we're going to apply a path effect. So under Path, I'm going to open the Path Effects menu. And with one selected, I'm just going to click on this little plus button. A lot of scary stuff in here. The one we want is B-Spline. 
and it'll open up this menu that has a couple of other options, all of which are scary, but the only one you really need to mess with is this change weight percentage. I kind of like 15%, and look how it nicely rounded the corners while still preserving that shape. So now I'm going to repeat that with all the other objects, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so to my knowledge, there's not a way to do all of these together. You have to apply a path to each, or a path effect to each individual path. But if you know of another way, please let me know. Uh, last thing we need to do is you'll notice if I inspect with the nodes tool, the nodes still go out to the outer border. So it still thinks it's the same shape that we started with. And that's probably not what we want if we're cutting this out on a laser, or if we are going to be doing anything other than just representing this as a graphic. So to fix that, all you have to do, let's do it for one first, is go to path and select object to path. And it won't look like anything's changed, but try selecting something else and selecting this. And now you'll notice that it actually has nodes around the borders themselves rather than at just the points. So now this is exactly what we need for cutting out on either laser or importing it to Fusion 360 or something to that effect. Instead of trying to do this to all of them independently, I can just grab them all and select object to path, and now all of them look the right way. So there we go. That's how you make a Voronoi pattern in Inkscape. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, and then until next time, happy making.